Hi, I'm Dr. Grace Hammond. Welcome back to Learning Middle English with me. And today we're actually going to look at some real Middle English and break down a couple sentences together. Now, you might be wondering, wow, we're already at that point. But here's the deal. Middle English is close enough to modern English that the best way to learn how to read it is to dive right in. Once you've got that little bit of history, that little bit of awareness, about the language itself, about dialects, about what you should be reading. It's great just to jump in and give it a try yourself. So, let's give it a shot. Here is my setup for reading Middle English. I have my main text set up in front of me on a book stand, so if you own a cookbook stand, this is a great use of it. Um, my husband got this one for me from Barnes & Noble several years ago. I have a translation handy, a modern English translation, in case I need it. I have a place for taking notes. And this is an extremely important tool. It's the Middle English Dictionary. This is the web address that you can use, or you can just Google Middle English Dictionary. Um, that's just as good, and it will. the first thing that pops up is this website. And that actually looks something like this. Here's the Middle English Dictionary. So I have that open as well at the same point because especially when you first begin reading, you're gonna be doing a lot of searching of things. And don't forget, most Middle English books also have um, glossaries in the back of them where you can look at particular words and gloss them. So uh, you have a lot of options, either the back of the book or the Middle English Dictionary. Let's get started. Okay, so I have us opened up to the second chapter of Julian's Showings, the long text. And um, because really because the first chapter is a long list-like situation, not as useful for practicing reading sentences. So we're gonna begin with this second chapter. And the first thing that I recommend you do is that you read it aloud in your own English. So don't try to do a Middle English accent. And by the way, we will get to Middle English accents and you'll be able to practice that. But right now we're just diving into the text, just giving it a shot. So you're gonna read in your own English um, out loud if you can, in your mind very deliberately if you cannot. And this helps us because Middle English uh, has a much more flexibility with sentence structure than modern English does. So modern English nearly always follows um, pretty set guidelines for where subjects and verbs and objects come in the sentence. In Middle English, these things can come all over the place. Um, this is a more flexible language. So reading it out loud, helps us to naturally get the feel of the sentence and find those things. So I'm gonna start with that first sentence and just read it in my regular, old, boring Arizona accent. This revelation was shewed to a simple creature, unlettered, living in deadly flesh, the year of our Lord, 1373, the 13th day of May. Okay, so as I'm reading it aloud, I'm asking myself, what is standing out to me? What am I sort of stumbling over or bumping over? Find those words that you trip over. And in this sentence, there's three. One is this right here. One is this one right here. One is this one right here. Now that's pretty good for Middle English. And we think of Middle English as being so tricky and different, but really it has a lot in common with modern English, which is why we can dive into it in a way that we couldn't dive into a text written in Spanish or German. So let's work on the first one, shoeed. Now, those of you who are British, <laughs> you may uh, recognize this um, antique spelling of showed, right? 
Um, or if you're a big Jane Austen fan, you might recognize that. So that one, we have a bit more context for this funny spelling. But if I got really confused, I would stop and I would go ahead and look it up in my glossary or in the Middle English Dictionary, that website that I showed you earlier. The next letter, word I mean, <laughs> this one, unlettered, unlettered. And something really fun about Middle English is that a lot of words uh, sound exactly like what they mean. So unlettered, lacking letters, um, that is quite literal, except uh, <laughs> What it specifically means, because you might go, how then is she reading and writing all these things? Some people feel like, okay, she actually was illiterate. But if you, again, if you look up unlettered and you dig a little deeper, you'll discover, oh, it means that she doesn't um, read Latin. So that's specifically what unlettered means. It's sort of like a version of uneducated, unspecialized educated. So... And here's a funny thing where we notice that sentence structure again. We have adjective, noun, adjective. That's funny, and that certainly doesn't happen in Middle English. I mean, in modern English very often, but it does happen in Middle English. So you can, um, but once you slow down, it makes sense. A simple creature unlettered. And then the last one that I stumbled over was this, but again, Slowing down and looking at the context very deliberately easily solves this problem. It's a formula, the year of our Lord, 1373. And so we can recognize that as year, not year, as I was tempted to say. You've read a sentence in Middle English. That really is the pattern that I use for even the toughest sentences. And in a different dialect, that's a lot harder. Or in poetry, where the verb is all over the place, this is going to be a slower and different process. But that is really the bare bones foundation of how you can read it yourself. So let's look at the next sentence. Remember, I'm going to read it out loud in my regular old accent. Which creature desired before three gifts by the grace of God? Oh, this one's a little more puzzling. I started reading it because it had which at the beginning as if it were a question. Because in modern English, which begins always uh, question sentences, right? So we have, that's confusing, which. Now here's my next hot tip. If you're stuck on a sentence, you break down the sentence and find the parts. So first, you should find the verb. So I see here, desired is the verb. Okay, so what is desired referring to? A creature. There's our subject. Julian is, of course, herself the creature. This helps me to figure out what which means, I realize that this referent which is referring to the creature that we first learned of in this previous sentence. So if I can find out what the verb is and figure out any reference like which or any pronouns and figure out what they belong to, then it helps me to break down this sentence further and to get to the meaning of it. So I have we would probably today, instead of saying which creature, we would say this creature desired before three gifts by the grace of God. And what else would, might we stumble on in that sentence? This little use of before here. And this is another funny thing about Middle English is that a lot of uh, words that we take for granted in how we use them are used a little differently. So this before doesn't mean anything um, different, but it's just working in the sentence a little differently. So before still means earlier. So this creature earlier desired those three gifts by the grace of God. And that's really the pattern that you use over and over and over to decipher Middle English and read it for yourself. Get your tools out, get all ready to go, and set yourself up and have fun with it.
and I will be taking requests for any passages that are tricky or difficult and we can work on them together because um, that's really how you begin to get comfortable and skilled at this process is by working on it with other people. Um, if you don't go slow enough, you might think too quickly that you know the meaning. So just make sure that you go really slow and keep those ones that you're hung up on and we can work on them. Um, so again, I'm Grace. You can, uh, if you're hungry for more Middle English, you can subscribe to my newsletter, Medievalish, which is on Substack. So go check that out. Or you can listen to my podcast, Old Books with Grace, which often features cool medieval things. So I hope that you have fun reading Middle English and working on these tips. And let me know if you need any help. Thanks. <laughs>